Welcome to Onivia, League of Legends Highlights. These are the best highlights from today's Worlds 2024 matchup. Like Nautilus wants to try and hook Carry out of the Zenith Blade and set them up, but um, we'll have to see how they're going to try and play that one out. That was an interesting cover. They were kind of expecting a little delayed invade there. Oh, Mickey. Mickey, Carry is there. Mickey tries to dredge line away. The charm moves him in place. And I don't think Mickey needs to burn the flash here. He knows he's done for. First blood to T1. And I really think G2, because they know that they were able to sweep out Mickey's ward, and he's got a path towards Caps. He's been trying to pressure Faker in the mid lane. In comes Ona, just why Caps able to sidestep it, but might have to burn the flash to get away from the charm. It oh. misses too. Caps with the fancy feet. So smart from him. Play Dodging around Owner's positioning. Already, you know, Yike was able to steal away stop, uh, top Scuttle Crab because of the mid lane gank. Uh, and now Caps just has to hover down to the bottom side. Baker, Charm Flash, always a possibility. Caps gets Charm, Jikes on his way as well. There's the edge of itch tile, but doesn't get the stun into the wall. Faker force low. Ona walking away as well. Caps didn't burn anything again in the gank is low HP. And it's a really nice job here in the early stages from Yike. He gets the top crab, immediately move bot, gets bot one, covers there on the mid play for Caps too. And now you're in a position where you've a bit of a, a nice ATS lead for yourself. Post. Zenith played in, Kevin's gonna have to flash away. Hans Summer, one more adoration! But Hans Summer on his Draven! Draven cashes in! The uh, sword start in this bottom lane. And then there's the swap for Grubs immediately. Duo lane going up towards the top side. Broken Blade wants to try and push a little bit oh, worse. Hans. I mean, Zeus has Flash, has the explosive cast. Hans has both his summoners as well, but Hans Summer continues to put axes into the back of Zeus. The cleanse away from Hans, flashes forward. Zeus flashes away, we'll get the slow with the cask. Hans now in the middle of the minions, doesn't have a ward to place. Zeus can open up and <laughs> Zeus finds it. A solo kill for the Gragas. Meanwhile, in the top lane, a hook's gonna land onto Ona. Broken Blade looking for the stun, Root goes down. As Yike, Mickey and Broken Blade disengage. Action. Classical exchange, drops for Drake. As you say, G2 did a good job of getting the prio in the top lane to make sure the Grubs were a safe bet, but T1 will happily accept a Cloud Drake for themselves. Most of the action has been around our bot laners so far, but perhaps Zeus here, no flash, does have the explosive cast coming back off cooldown in a second, and as soon as you see Carrier, you call off this dive. Yeah, good read from both Carrier and G2, spotting that Carrier was up there. Broken Blade now trying to force Owner away, but I, I mean, think five it's... seconds now in the Void Grubs, and you've got push in top, you're pushing bot, so Broken Blade gets the plates, and you're in position as G2 first. I think T1 have fumbled this a little bit. G2 will start up the Grubs. T1 are looking for a Barney. They're looking for a fight here. Mickey looking for that hook. Owner stepping forward, eats an axe. Caps and Mickey standing around the side. Caps low mana. They go into Carrier. Paranoia. There's the shockwave as well. Meanwhile, in the bottom line, Broken Blade's going to look to try and keep Zayas around. One already over as Yike kills off Carrier. Owners kill Caps, though. And now Yike has to run for Baker and Gumiyushi. Owner so low in the pit. He gets two. Hans Summer will answer with one. Cleanses away, but he's not going to be able to get too much more here. He can get a second. Gumiyushi able to win out the fight in the end. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, much ado about nothing. Oh, man. It seems like Carrier is getting... set up towards the top side, TPing away from bot as well. Broken Blade giving up the ghost on that tower. Zayo's gonna get hooked in here. Still has the explosive cast and the flash. It's more Mickey acting as a distraction as G2 try and rattle their way through this tower. They'll take the second turret of the game and they continue to push forward here. Five Grubs helping them out quite a lot in taking these towers quickly. Yeah, and the price, of course, that they are gonna pay is not only the push on the opposite side, but the dragon number two here for T1, which owner is able to clean up. Faker does not have cast. teleport. Already used, Zeus caught out with a Counter-Strike though, and Zeus is met with the Whirling Death. The curtains open, Hans Summer's so low, but Broken Blade can tank that up well enough as G2 managed to escape with a kill. Caps is looking for a little bit more though, Gumi Yushi has the flash, has the barrier, and I think G2 realized they can't really dive this. Yeah, but look at the bot side. Faker's completely pushing in, Gumi Yushi's still looking for more, Broken Blade, gonna have to place a ward so we can hop on out of there, a there it is. A lot of options for themselves. Looks like they're gonna try and fight G2 off of this bottom quadrant of the map. Saw this not work out for DK yesterday. We'll see if T1 have a better affair. Is there to suppress immediately? They lock them in. The shotgun coming out as well as Broken Blade tries to survive. The tower will die, but Caps is low. Faker diving forward with the paranoia on him. And Nikki's going to be the first to pull G2. All hail the retreat. Try to get the hell out of here because T1 are hungry for blood. Faker will find another as T1 find two in the bot lane die. T1 read G2 perfectly. Faker had already moved in towards this bottom side and the second Broken Blade leap striked in. Zeus was like, you're all mine. The cask into the blowback and immediately kill him afterwards. Great stuff by T1.
this Zeus Gragas that he has pulled out here. Looks like he's going to even further improve on his win rate with this champion with how he's playing. He's just oh, been... TP behind. Wait, Faker doesn't have flash, doesn't have spirit rush. Carry's going to try and keep Cabs busy. Owner comes across the wall with the edge of Ishtal. Will get himself to the blast cone in time. Faker's still trying to retreat down towards the bottom side, but he'll get out as well. And all the meanwhile, Zeus just TPs the top lane and takes another tower. I think the next thing you have to look to for G2 is your uh, really decent amount of gold. They still do have a lot of territory to work with now. And if Yike can get one more level, you actually get a nice range boost on your ultimate, but... Sort of flare. Yike puts up the shroud. In goes the stinger and down onto the back line goes Yike. Looking for that paranoia. Mickey knocked in as well. Gumi Yushi has to flash away. The whirling death coming out from Hansama. And Faker's on the flank. Kemi chased out by Broken Blade. There'll be one. Faker trying to get onto Hansama as well. Lands the charm. Owner's there to help. The cleanse from Hans is not enough. And now it's a 3v4. T1 advancing again. Gumi Yushi was able to escape. Faker has another spirit rush. The charm goes wide. Yike and Caps alongside Broken Blade able to keep on to their lives right now. Zeus though can look for more. Broken Blade stepping forward into the darkness. Rift Tower pushed in the mid lane. That's going to take the tower. And it's only a Chem Drake. The T1 really care too much about it. G2 realize they can't fight around it anymore and they'll back towards the bot lane. The cask again from Zeus splitting up that fighter perfectly in favor of T1. It looks a little dicey. Especially because you know, Dagda is mentioning Faker's build. And Faker's build not only uh, is it very burst heavy, but it's also very far ahead. Oh, never Aranoia mind. Into the shockwave, they look for Gumi Yushi. He doesn't have the flash, and they will find him. Another hook's gonna land on Tuona as the chase continues. Zeus coming in with the explosive cast, though, and G2 have to be careful because TB coming in from Faker. Mickey dodges away from the explosive cast, pulls Carrier in. The charm goes wide on Summer. Still cleanses just in case. T1 lose one, it's only Gumi down. Gumi Mickey. He's incredibly close to that, so they might have that small advantage when it comes towards the AD carries. Even the two items just can be completed for caps, means he's quite dangerous when it comes to that Nocturne Oriana combo. Solar Flare onto Caps. Faker going in with the charm. Only hits onto Mickey. Cut and Call coming out as well. There's the Impale, and Mickey's just dragged in a double counter strike into the shockwave, though. And Faker is a down. Explosive cast will separate Caps and Hans Summer from the fight. Zayas on that front line. Three items strong, and he's trying to use them to their full effect. Owner down to about half HP. Zayas low as well. Hans Summer trying to open up on Gumi Yushi, who still has the flash. In the end, a support for mid lane trade. What a pick from T1 on towards Mickey. The fact that he managed to get him out of the fight means there's very little setup. Doesn't even get to use the ultimate to try and set up. And T1 then get to continue for marching forward. It is one back on towards Faker and to G2, feeling they have the damage to fight this. G2 with no ultimates. Broken Blade dashing in here, jumping across that wall. Owner. They're trying to smite the Drake, would be sold for them. Counter Strike from Broken Blade. Here comes Zeus. Flash Zenith Braid. They look for the engage onto Hans Summer, who has to flash away himself. Caps is down to half HP. Broken Blade jumps across the pit. And now Mickey's here to bolster the defenses. Faker on his way back doesn't have the teleport. The Drake secured Chem Soul. Now for T1, G2 begin to back away from the fight, realize they don't really want any more of this action. Yikes slowed up, though. A hook goes down. Only onto Owner. Caps not back. Zeus finds him, and now Yike's running for the hills, locked up with a captive audience, Yike down two, it's a Baron on the cards for T1. G2 took the most dangerous route out of that fight, and T1 were happy to collapse. They're going to be able to move over towards the Baron. I don't think he can go for this as a contest here for G2. Mickey, yes, has the ultimate available, but it's five members of T1, and Faker is fishing for the charm. Hans has the Whirling Death, maybe looking for a steal across the wall. Faker back. There's a little bit of vision here for G2, that ward just outside of the pit, giving them a sense of what's going on inside it. Broken Blade looking for the flank, no, no flash on him, but does have that Grandmaster's Might. Mickey looking for the engage, but realizes uh, pretty sharpish that he can't go for it. Still charmed up, Spear Rush forward by Faker. There's the curtain calls as well, and his curtains for Mickey. Carrier takes him, and T1 take the Baron. They are in firm control of the game as Hans Summers overstepped two. Hans Summers down two. T1, 6k ahead, a soul, a Baron, and maybe more of his Broken Blade's charmed. And T1 continue to collapse. The jump away from Broken Blade will keep him safe for a moment, but T1 are knocking on the door. Dude, Zeus is just the GOAT. He's MVP. MVP, holy moly. He is such a playmaker. You think of the God of Lightning with him, but, you know, God of the Cakes in this game. <laughs> really, really impressive. Game number one here so far for T1, and after the Baron push, already taking mid inhibitor, they have so much money to spend. You have to think it's gonna be a quick reset for them and right back out to pushing.
They have so much money and so much time. Still two minutes left on that Red Bull Baron power play. They've already got 3.5k off it. Mickey contributing to the Nautilus death thund. Misses the hook as Carrier goes wide with the Zenith Blade 2. Mickey has to flash away. It's another engage tool lost for G2. I mean, it was a ner no nerdy another death for Mickey. Nerdy going to be 0-8 in this game, but... G2 now starting to push out. T1 did stick around a little bit long, so maybe G2 a Faker separated field, they have a chance to go in, but I think it's still incredibly difficult because honestly, that's only a, f a flank angle for Faker. Very small window there to engage. They did have a little bit of vision. A TP coming in. Zayas will be the one on the front line. Faker will be the one on the back, but Zayas immediately locked up. You can see how much damage he can tank. Faker going in with the charm, it goes wide. Zayas almost falls to the whirling He's death of the and he still has the locket. Faker dodges away from the hook. Zayas going back in, and there's your contribution. Mickey falls, the shockwave from Caps. All it can do is buy him a second to wait. The flash charm from Faker. It's all done, it's all over. But the Nexus falling, T1 are going to go 1 0 up. Zayas can do no wrong. TP's in to what? should have been his death but instead it's t1 killing g2 and taking game number one t1 may have limped through summer but this is worlds and they are here to stay broken blade and yike trying to do anything but they still have the impale the suppression afterwards with the edge of ishtal the chase onto yike the explosive cask and as you say zayas godly with his placements today the Nexus Towers fall, and T1 will go one game away from Paris and quarterfinals. <laughs> Mickey gets a kill. <laughs> the problem is the hook is committal, and that's what Mickey was using a lot of the time. And this is just so, so all in T2 dive. Brought Hans and Mickey into mid to try and get the shove there as well. The problem for G2 is if they do look for an engage, they still has the TP where Caps does not. So this could very quickly turn into a 5v4. Broken Blade very low on Rage as well, starting to build it up as he jumps onto Ona. He's only a third of the way there so far. Ona going lower though, Dustbringer coming out. Double flash as Mickey looks for the flash hook. Meanwhile in the bot lane, Caps is trading up with Zayas. Carrier going back in, Faker with the Spirit Rush has two charges left. G2 need to get away because Faker can look for another Spirit Rush, another Orbit Deception won't find too much more. G2 start up the Grubs, they're quite hurt. Feed up to the top lane only a few moments ago. If they try to invest, obviously Zayas can join the battle and they would be at a numbers disadvantage again. They won't battle against it. See Yike just hovering. Hunt Looks somewhere. like they're just going to shift Faker up towards that top side. I wasn't sure if they just went all in on trying to burn that flash, but Mickey... Oh, Faker goes in with the Spear Rush, the Charm landing as well, and Mickey is done for. First blood in the first two games. Mickey dies, Ona takes the kill. By Ari, mm. pretty good. Then here for G2 when they do actually go to try and contest on towards those next round of Void Groups. It's interesting because Broken Blade doesn't have Teleport, but Owner's actually heading towards Broken Blade rather than the Void Groups. Yes, looking for this play down towards the bottom side. Broken Blade flashes immediately met with a fist in his face. Broken Blade trying to get away from this. Obviously, has to try and escape from Owner who flashes forward. Another Volt Breaker. Broken Blade trying to dodge it. Owner holds it forever. Owner. Finds another as Broken Blade can't escape his clutches. There was no escape there. Good pressure here to answer for some of the turret places. Faker, no way he catches Mickey again. You put everyone on pause. Wait, yeah. what? You said that? <laughs> Everyone's like. Oh, Mickey looking for the hook here. Uh, so Yike can come in with the paranoia. There's the depth charge as well. The chase forward. Kerry has joined his mid laner. Faker flashes away. The ignite no. ticking on him won't be enough. That's the stun into the shield of the Reef. They break into the solar fire into the death of Yike. Rob, <laughs> your know was heard around Europe. They were so close, but they just couldn't quite find the damage to kill off Faker. Oh, I'm heartbroken. We were so close. Oh. Mickey, though. Another Zenith Blade. Ona has cease and desist here, but I don't think... to kill Mickey. Now it's kind of the reverse situation. And Faker did get that little, uh, you know, sight of Mickey. So good vision toggle by the observers. And then the engage comes through from Mickey, and it's a nice setup carry here to try and help, but... Oh, bot side. Oh, Zayas flashes away. He's hit with a house. And Caps and Broken Blade find a kill. Carry is looking to collapse here as well as Guma Yushi, but this tower is already quite low, down to... One plate remaining on it. Carrier going in with the Zenith Blade. Gumi Yushi there with a deadly flourish as well. Broken Blade still pretty tanky though. Yikes here to join the fray. Has the paranoia. Can't go into Guma, but there's a flash and a barrier on that AD carry, making it a little bit more suspect to go for the dive. H Mickey and Hansa They're are starting to collapse, and this will be first tower over to G2. Faker even dropped off that top tower, trying to move down. Still, to I think it's a hugely beneficial kind of response uh, from G2 because they get the. See the lane economy snapshot brought to you by Mastercard. Very much in favor. 
favor of owner no big surprises there broken play trying to hide him. in the top lane he's going to tp away will he escape you can see it on the mini map the counter strike finds him alongside the cease and desist and broken play doesn't have a hope in hell of escaping this one zayas leaps on his base and takes another 4-1 now to t1 it's interesting that they have such a uh, bounty on G uh, on broken blades head it feels like uh, and, and I'm going to keep looking for kills on him and try and really put that NAR behind to the point that Zeus is going to be able to control side lanes. Faker is going to be able to Another get Another charm picks. hits once again. Mickey thought he was safe in his own jungle, but there was nowhere safe from T1. And this is the moment in the game, in game one, where we saw T1 begin to explode it away from G2's grasp. You can see already two and a half thousand gold ahead. Now with the Rift Hole charging through mid, they're going to open up the map and make it so much more tricky for G2 to do anything. Charm wide there by Faker, but he's just creating space. The solar player hits. Hans Summer has to burn the cleanse. And Zeus is on the oh. flank. The counter strike. Strike Hans Summer flashes it. Rift Hell charge forward. Zona can jump across that wall and look for Hans Summer. Yike with a fear. Only on to Zayas. They're looking for the damage. The shockwave will find him. Hans Summer surviving up towards the top side for as long as he can in the face of Ona. But now he's down and Kerry is down alongside him. G2 find two. They lose their mid tier one. Can they find anything more? I think the answer is no. Of caps, and that's where exactly where you want it. The big shockwave plays are going to be the ones that you need to try and leverage yourself back into this game. You have the Nocturne delivery. We'll see if they're able to make something. It won't be now because, of course, they're splitting and trying to grab tower first. I think it still will be a little tough for G2, though, because Caps has gone for this more defensive build. Up and in towards the Zanyas first means he doesn't really have that big firepower. I think it's the correct Ooh. way to go. One in control of the game, about 3,000 gold ahead. A Drake apiece means there's no soul point soon, but we see Caps pushing in the top lane and the TP behind. Zayas on the collapse, has the flash, Caps goes one way, Zayas goes the other, now he tracks back, knowing that Caps is there, the paranoia coming out as Mickey, and Yike looks to collapse, a flash away from the shockwave from Zayas is gorgeous! And once again, Zayas in this series puts G2 he in there. He just play. completed his Rage Blade, so they, they definitely have some really good looks here. Maybe he's just finished his Mega now and he's gone in. He still gets the Gnar into the wall. The backline, Gumiyushi flashes away. The Shockwave, I think, we're a little bit early there. As Broken Blade is forced low. Spirit Rush forward by Faker as T1 begins to collapse. And Mickey's burst on the menu again. Faker with a Spirit Rush across the wall. Looking for Yike. No curtain call connects and G2 are able to walk away. Great target selection from... Two Dragons in this game. Timing really has been the biggest advantage for T1. I feel like not only the defensive kind of T1, right? So I think it's more, as you can see, like losing side lane turrets for investing on that bottom side. And again, T1 playing off wave states excellently, pushing mid, catching out G2. And now G2 trying to move in mid, but they could get collapsed on from behind. There's a pincer movement brewing here. Teleport. See the TP behind that Faker. Faker. Counter TP being used by Broken Blade. Curtain Call coming in as the stopwatch is used. Dion onto the back line jumps. Kumi Yushi, a good shockwave as well onto Zayas. And now we see Hansama having to try and get away from this. Owner going in as he puts the damage down onto Caps. Owner flashing away. Zayas the same. The killer instinct from Hansama gets Zayas in response. Now Faker diving around the fight. A hook coming out. Broken Blade trying to get into the Mega Nar. He'll jump on their heads. Goomba stopped them. Faker escaping. Carrier yeah, slammed into the wall. On the top side, Yank killed off Kumi Yushi. And G2 somehow. Find a fight! Only Faker gets out alive! G2 are gonna get some extra money with the tower mid, and Faker just barely does so. Broken Blade hunting for him, but he's not gonna find the hiding spot. G2 strike back. Wow. Team looking at each Side other screens glasses. as well during the paranoia to get that little bit of extra vision. I love the not using the shockwave, but immediately they do! Paranoia in! Faker down! Solo play onto the back line as well. We see Hans Summer falling for it. Mickey trying to get into this fight. Broken Blade on his way across as well. Carrier owner there as well with Guma Yushi trying to get away. Doesn't have the flash. Owner doesn't. Carrier goes back in with the Zenith Blade. He's a sacrifice. A sacrificial lamb for G2. As there's two more on the board for them. Keep the pace up. G2, they do not. Is it going to be a dangerous face check? Or are they going to try and get control of the mid wave first? Thank you. Looking for the hook. There's the charm. Deadly flash going in. Owner looking for that back line. The solar player hits two. Paranoia coming out. Owner can't go in with the engage. Zayas now locked out. Pops the stopwatch to buy himself a little bit of time. He's feared though. The shockwave hits onto Owner as he looks for the engage. Goes in with the season assist. The Guardian Angel still sitting on Owner's shoulders. Will bring him back to life. Broken Blade with a good double nine to the wall. Owner trying to get back in with that shield from the Vault Breaker. But he will fall. Baker can't escape. Broken Blade. Gumiyushi now trying to dance his way away. But the, the eyes are on Carrier for G2. They're looking for one more. Gumiyushi will have the fleet. Will have the move speed from this gin. Broken Blade chucks a house out, can't quite land it onto Goomer's back. Caps with the dissonance, there's the slow from the red buff. They dodge the captive audience, and Goomer's down two. An ace for G2. G2 are coming alive, this combo finally Faker. working.
and it's still gonna be a G2 Baron. Now you said it in game one, Kobe. G2 the push then sets up for that big shockwave as well. And it's after that, again, just moving back, buying space here. On the here transformation of the Nar as well. Now with the Baron buff, they can get so many rewards. Tier 2 tower doesn't stand a chance. That's another 800 gold for the team, immediately picked up. Void Mites from their oh, six oh, 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 Void the Grub spotting well. out. Baker being forced back to the Fountain, has the Flash, has the TP, but G2 are trying to open up the base. Owner looking for that flank. Is GA not back off cooldown yet? About half the way forward, inhibitor tower and inhibitor for G2 in the top lane. They take a gold lead for the first time. Hurry to try and help him out, so looking to go for that cross map. Just G2 though, dropping, only playing off of two waves. So the safe uh, with his Zonias in the back line, just constantly providing so much threat. Uh, so we'll see here. You even have another stasis built by Hansama. It's just so durable for G2, they're just bullying them. Solar Flare, Hansama dodges, only gets slowed. Broken Blade goes in with an arm only onto Ona. Zayas has TP'd in behind, and he dives onto Hansama immediately. And Hansama has a stopwatch, but he doesn't have much life left afterwards. He manages to get away with the kill of Insignia, Mickey and Capsule only down. Ona face blasts the wall this time. Broken Blade left it to his own devices, and T1 clean him up. The flash in from Zayas with a counter strike. Mickey trying to dredge line his way out of this one, but Faker's on the chase, as is Carrier. And Mickey, those hooks are sending you to Davy Jones's locker. Baker will take it. T1 will take the fight. Mickey is gone six feet under, but it G2 cannot fathom how T1 have got in behind them so consistently. It was a delay played on the TP. It's a delay take on Mickey because 50 seconds until Dragon will deny a lot of control to G2. But T1 again, these Wait, Zayus has hiding once again. Look at him. You can see Mickey's only just getting off towards where the red buff is. The paranoia comes out. It's Guma that secures the Drake. They're looking up towards the top side. Zayas caught out with the paranoia. Gets the counter strike, but there's the fear as well. The killing instinct coming in from Hansama as they look to catch out Zayas. The rest of T1 trying to come back to defend their top laner, but Zayas will be down before they can get there. G2 find one. Go they mid, lost go the mid. Drake, they lost the soul. They go mid, Kobe. They can hear your call. G2 knocking on the doors of the Nexus now as T1 trying to defend. Shockwave is still up and available for Caps. You have to be so careful as T1 as you try to defend this. How much do G2 want to try and take Super Minions on the top side as well? It's so big. Three inhibitors here. You're going to get... Uh, well, can they get three? Top just respawned. He puts this one control board down. All Owner needs to do is get into this pit and he might be able to snipe this away. The curtain's open. An encore for Guma Yushi. Ona gets into he gets it! it! Mm. And he takes it! Ona will pay the ultimate price for his ability to steal the Baron. He keeps T1 in the game, and G2 just couldn't dot their eyes and cross their T's. Fight back against the Baron buff. They should be able to get another inhibitor for themselves, but T1 with that Baron buff should be able to defend. The tankiness the minions get from the Baron buff, they'll be spawning. In a few seconds time for T1, there they are, they'll help them defend, Baker goes in, that charge, shockwave, there's two knocked up, but Zayas is already on the back line, the knock coming out from Broken Blade as well, Zayas is doing so much work, caps down, and Summer running for his life, Baker charms up Broken Blade, Zayas is just ripping through G2, yeah, Faker survives on the back line. Yike trying to do everything he can. The paranoia will help him take out his enemy jungler. On Summer trying to survive here. Zayas has to call off the chase. But T1 once again hold on to the game. On Summer looking for those void seekers as well. Baby is half health though. Faker did a good job of chucking him out. Zayas now stepping forward. Nobody willing to hit him. G2 behind, push back. Keeper behind is Faker. He's looking for the spirit rushes up in a second's time. Faker's met by Yike. Mickey on the front line. The shockwave going out as well. Broken Blade lands the knob. It doesn't get a stun onto anyone. And G2 dis engage they're desperate to try and get anything here but Match. t1 the supers pushing in the top side g2 have control of the river right now solar player hunt summer only slowed but caps is the one they dive into and immediately assassinate him caps is swimming with the fishes and hunt summer is gonna join him t1 immediately pounce and g2 don't know what hit him t1 are forever clutch and g2 are finding out about it in the worst possible way zay is chasing down broken blade as t1 turns towards the outer yike the last one was stolen can you find revenge use the blast cone to jump onto caps's head even with these defensive items we keep Being pointing out the last two years looking to defend their world title a minute left on this elder dragon as well it means that two more waves that you have to try and hold off but i don't even know if you get that 
Team One can just start to look at Nexus turrets off this wave. It's got to be something miraculous. You've got a GA on Guma Yushi. You've got Faker with the Spirit Rush. The curtain's open. I don't think G2 is getting a second act. The dive onto the back line by Yike, but immediately he is low caps already assassinated on the back. And T1 are just ripping them to shreds. T1 absolutely melting G2 under their Nexus towers. History doesn't repeat itself, but it damn well rhymes. It's another Friday. It's another T1 win. Welcome to Onivia. League of Legends highlights. These are the best highlights from today's Worlds 2024 matchup. Yeah, I like having those solo laners hit six just in time for like Void Grub fights or anything like that. So not having that, I sorry, not having that flash available for that combo is going to be a bit sad. Flash in onto on here. Doesn't have the exhaust in a flash of his own. Zenith plays onto Junja to try and get himself away. Exhaust on the Sejuani, not the target you want. Jun trying to join the fray. Elk having to cleanse flash away as Jun is now caught with a shadowing strike and PSG find first blood in the bot lane and will force Jun away. Nice the one-two matches, right? Because this is not where BLG expected to be. It's kind of where PSG expected to be, as Betty should be able to go away here. The Zenith Blade going in. Betty trying to trade back onto Elk. On, went in with the Zenith Blade himself. Doesn't have the exhaust up. Now he's taking the Magnus Storm coming out as well. And what is on doing? Looking for the engage, think, thinking Shun would back him up, but he was left to his own devices. And in the end, he's left to his demise. Well, the thing is, one of the players that has been involved in some of these world's winning rosters was Junja, and he's keeping it going. Goes in with the Glacial Prison. The cleanse was available for Elk, and he holds it. The bullet time opens up. Jun going in with the Cyclone, looking to make a Tempest. He'll take one. Junja falls. Woody trying to get the CC onto Jun to keep Betty alive. Jun holds it and dies in the end. Try to flash away, but Betty was puts... using the time to take a Drake for themselves. They know they can then go across and even try to catch Knight out, who'll get the Blast Cone, but Junja's gonna follow him across. Knight still has the Flash, has the ult, has the dash with the Weirding. Caught out with the Glacial Prism, True Shot Barrage coming out as well, and Knight now has to invest that Summoner. As well, you can see the ward placed there. Junja and Woody looking for the invade towards the red buff. They are pushing mid, they are pushing bot. Betty here to join the battle. Maple gets the first move, can look for a flank here with the Fate Seal, dashes forward, unbinds his soul on down to half HP. The Solar Flare goes in with a bullet time and that's too locked up. And Woody's the first to fall. Maple was distracted by Knight. Betty dashing back in between worlds. Knight can look for more. Maple dives in with a Fate Seal, but BLG will happily take the triple for Elk. And just like AOE, that the idea was there, but the execution was off. Yeah, going into those tiny corridors is just perfect for the BLG composition and PSG pay the price bin. Still relatively low and I just snuck in here, but there's so many members of BLG collapsing. Jun cleared out the ward. See On on his way up as well. TPE coming in as PSG. Well, they're not going to do anything to help out Azure here. He's dead. Knight takes it. Yeah, they have oh, demolished, will, yeah. right? They have three people in the demolished from Bin. They should be able to take this one first. Maple trying to match, as you say, on the bottom side, but BOG with the TP in. Invests a lot to make sure they take the first turret. And it does give them that gold infusion that Gage they were looking for. over towards mid to cover that mid lane play, so it's a nice read from PSG, and Knight just not wanting to give over There's that no little turret to really put pressure onto. PSG are still holding on towards mid. They have push on boss, so it kind of was like a Hail Mary. Or earlier, I really think, you know, he's in a position with Cleanse Flash Ezreal uh, to be able to now... Oh, the ultimate down the now wave. for Aja. He gets the wave, oh, and because of that, they decide not to dive. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Look at the pressure PSG are putting on TP from Knight away from the wave. PSG should be able to get the tier two here, but they might sacrifice their tier one in mid for it. Elk opens up on the tower, takes it, and the tier two will be exchanged. BLG deciding that they couldn't defend anyway, and so they want to make sure they open up the map. And it's not a bad idea. You do get two terrors there. 100% true, it. but I will say, if we're going down this animal farm route, <laughs> I feel like the mid lane towers are quite important Wrong as well. Now the cup is Q3, PSG. Still fighting over this dragon. TP coming in from Azure as well. He's just finished the Shadow Flame. Two items on the cannon. Bin will TP to the control ward down towards the top side Azure's of the, the fight. Jun is in the pit. Azure is behind them. There's a control ward there. Betty putting damage into the on right now. Jun going in with the Cyclone onto the back line. Finds Maple but doesn't find Betty. Azure and PSG will disengage the fight. Jun has to flash the wall but he's locked up with his fate sealed. Bin now in the pit trying to fight, battle against Jun Jun and Maple but BLG are all retreating. Will PSG look for more? Azure has the flash, has the slicing motion, but PSG decides that's enough. PSG just end up separated. That's PSG, they're on Baron. In the last team fight, they divide and conquer. Can they just get this objective 
Uh, Bin uses the Hex to there to see the information. Woody diving in, and he stops Alp from putting under bullet time. The Slicing Mouse from on the back line as well. Knights in the pit, but Maple puts him in the dirt. Bin now going in for a little bit more, but can't let the counter strike onto Maple. <laughs> Another is down on his fallen PSG. Uh, somehow Over. They're at three dragons. They have control of the entire rift right now. And they've got the stun as well onto Elk, who has the flash and will use it to dash away from any follow-up engaged. Sun going in with the Cyclone, trying to make a Hurricane rip through PSG. They'll find one already. Jun stunned up. Azure flashing away from the Soul Affair all the while. Betty and Maple were pushing in the bot side. They take a tier two. Maple looks for a little bit more. On lands the stun with the Shield of Daybreak. The weirding out from Knight for a little bit of damage as well. True shot barrage between the, the upright. When they came into the play-ins. A lot of teams disappointed with their performance, where they didn't look as clean as they possibly could have. But yeah. oh. here. Cyclone again from Shun. True Shop Rush coming out from Betty as well. Between Worlds, Shun just locked up in it. He'll flash across on Falling Low. 200 HP on him now as Betty looks to open up. Fate sealed. The Slicing Maelstrom coming in too. Shun's down. Bin's down. On's down. And PLG are up. It's only Knight and Elk left alive. Can they defend against PSG? The TP is going to come in from Azure. The bullet time to clear the wave. And that might just be enough. There's another wave on its way. 10 seconds from hitting onto the inhibitor tower. Th 27 seconds on Shun. Knight starting to back away. One inhibitor seems to be the prize PSG get for winning that fight. Elk and Knight will try and defend at the Nexus Towers and PSG probably won't push for more. They don't invest the TB from Azure. They will PLG, they're just so far behind now. Completely out itemized. They they're the ones that have to pull out the surprise play. I think a lot of people forget that this TP was... Behind. Oh, hang on, TP yeah, behind. Oh, Woody's going to be engaged on here, but On is now in the meat grinder. Maple goes in with the face sealed, and Azure is just waiting for his opportunity to open up. Bin's taken one. The Slicing Maelstrom will find another, though. Betty being chased out by Shun. He'll flash away. Shun dies to Betty, and Betty survives. Bin diving in onto Maple, who can unbind his soul and then dash back. Shun just trying to keep the dragon aggro for now. Maple... Put into the dirt by Bin. PSG still have two alive. Elk's going to try and keep the dragon aggro, but Betty can do a lot of work from a lot of range right now. Elk has the bullet time coming up in seven seconds. Junja trying to heal himself back up in the jungle. Elk there makes it rain. Bin going to try and get for the reset. Elk still full HP. Bullet time, no flash, no... Well, it has the flash, but no cleanse. Bin TP's in. Junja's looking for it. And Elk oh. finds one. The shutdown, he'll find another great cleanse from Elk. Junja able to survive, oh but Bin God. will take the Drake. The soul, not quite, but PSG. That thousand gold, though, we'll see if that actually ends up paying off there for PLG. I mean, it's four items on Elk now. Hasn't gone for the upgraded boots, so many need them on MF because you have that strut on. That solar flare was a mile wide. On gets caught with the glacial prison, has no flash, has the exhaust, will get away for now. The world between is Woody trying to escape, but he's just burst out by Elk. Those four items coming to the fore for BLG. A cyclone onto Ginger who has the flash Bang. as well. The bullet time comes out, the slicing maelstrom as Bin is trying to dive across them. Betty and Maple, the only two left alive for PSG. Maple will flash for the bullet, still finds his back. BLG win the fight. PSG were so of it. A lot of bounty gold, both objective and champion, going the way of At the B same time, Cannon in the bot lane still harassing that tower down. Mid lane turret is taken by BLG. The gold swings in their favor for the first time in a long time in this game. I think there is an angle for PSG, though, to create pressure on this top so side. You are PSG, they forgo the outer turrets, but they hold on to what are the important ones in the grand scheme of things. Oh, BLG setting up something here. Junja able to dodge away from on, puts the Glacial Prison back in him. Down to half HP, the Mystic shots from Betty and on is off! Betty now locked in the pit with Knight, but do you really want to be locked in there with him? The TP in from Azure as well, looking at that Slicing Mushroom. Remember, there's no exhaust as well. With ESG trying to get the push through mid, through Maple. Bin still looking for that flank. Woody's going to try and mark him. They see him. The counter strike goes in. The bullet time as well. Azure's ripped to pieces. Fate sealed from Maple isn't enough. Bin diving onto Woody, and that's two. Betty forced away, has to dash away from Shun. And Bin is just doing so much work on the back line. It's a double for Elk. The flank. Sublime from BLG. At the end of the day, it's Bin Jax in back-to-back -back dragon fights. He gets the job done, and with the Baron buff, BLG are inside the base. And it just helps that Elk so much. The bullet time is perfect. The flash away from the Yone ult as well. Elk needed to be that follow-up and damage, and he's putting PSG down. 
it's Betty's time to shine. He opens up on Elku Tanks. The tower bin going in with a counter strike as well. They'll just take one Nexus tower for now. But Betty gets the slow. Knight goes in. And Betty dashes away. He can't survive the weirding. Puts him six feet under, and now BLG will open up on the second Nexus Tower. Woody going back in, looking for Bin again, but Bin somehow still survives. PSG wiped away under their Nexus Towers. Azure spawns just in time to watch the Nexus 14, fall. 18 busts that the Jace got, but never really had a strong foothold. You only yeah. saw like very small instances of just it. Just how so many things kind of domino into each other in that bot lane, right? Like Elk getting the reset, then being able to freeze it out. He has the colors already. 49 stacks left on it, so he's over halfway towards completing it. But because of the way that they then push the lane out, you can oh, see oh, Junja oh, actually oh. getting caught here as Jun going in for the engage on with a great hook, and Junja falls for first blood. And to your point, Medic, this is what Prime BLG looks like. This movement from on, constantly shifting around the map, holding positions so then he can get out and work his magic. And now Maple is running, hoping that he can find some sort of way to teleport out of this jungle, but short of magic or a miracle, I think he might be done for. And he gets clipped as well by the accelerated shock blast, meaning an execute is no longer an option for Maple. Shun should be able to chase him down, who dash across the wall with a flap, flap, flap. Knight still chasing here, Glacial Prison used just to make sure that this dragon is going extinct alongside his buddies. Knight will secure the kill, his second of the game. He was able to get really synergized with their five on fives. I will say, if I'm trying to funnel my gold on this PSG comp, I don't think Azure is the one that I really want to ah, funnel get, it on. You gotta point it somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get some on Maple, who's about 700 gold behind in the mid lane, and maybe more, as there's the flash engage from Shun. Maple down again, and Shun joins Knight on the scoreboard. And Hubris for Knight. Uh, an item we don't too often see. He's been seeing a lot of play in uh, solo queue recently and in ARAM, but. Uh, Kobe, do you want to elucidate why he may have gone this? Ah, uh, well, it's obviously because of the world song, Heavy Lies the Crown, and uh, it's, uh, it's a crown. <laughs> also, if you can't get a murder book, you need a murder crown. <laughs> oh, as we see, Shun getting caught up here. PSG trying to fight it, Bing going in with the Counter-Strike. Woody misses, but gets the charm, doesn't get the knock-up, and now he needs to get the hell out of there. Death Charge onto Ginger. It's another for Knight. He's stacking the hubris. Put them back. Under the ground, Knight finds another double, and that is 19 stacks. Woody investing everything. Maybe that can open up a place for PSG to attack. It's just, it's so difficult because the, well, set up with a teleport. Maybe they... So Betty has no Feather Storm, but does have a Cleanse and a Flash. On's trying to get on top of him to get the Staggering Blows down. They're going to land the Dredge Line onto Woody, who dashes back with a Battle Dance and escapes. I think well, BLG what? have a lot of winning answers to PSG's questions. As a side note, Oh, Bin, for a little bit of a fight here. Should be able to force Azure out of this bush. Goes in with the Counter-Strike. Knight dives in onto Maple. The quickness coming out as they look to dive onto my, uh, to Knight. Mom is called. Azure now on the front line. BLG will disengage. But yeah, extra AD a... for the next 90 seconds. And that can sack up as well, right? So you get stronger through the course of the fight, through your hubris, which is probably why. Tries to Hover around this bot side to keep this tower alive. Maple's here as well. Shunt is going to meet him. Impale lands onto one. The dredge line short from on. Elks, though, still looking for the plate. There's one minion still alive. On will now tank up the tower, and Woody will have a grand entrance and give on a grand exit. I mean, that, that's actually big. Any bit of gold that PSG can get at this stage in the game uh, could be very big for their dream of team fighting their way out of it. And, Shin is going to be able to execute no problem, does get all the way into enemy territory. Uh, so no further no benefit gain there, but still, even being able does. to... Andrew, of course, can keep in around in that lane, but might want to just dodge around the side here. Hex flash back across the wall from on to rejoin up with his teammates. PSG are looking for that fight. Ginger very tanky with the Zeke's convergence. Maple still stacking up, sneezing all over BLG. Woody looking for that flank, has the quickness, has the flash in a couple of seconds. The engage with the Glacial Prison. Better Storm coming out from Betty. Quickness from Woody. They're looking for on, but the Death Charge will lock him up for a second. On now, sacrificed by BLG as PSG managed to find a kill. Bin still pushing in the bot side. Jun being chased out by Aja, but doesn't quite land the sun into the wall. Jun just still looking for Elk, who has the cleanse, but goes for Knight instead. Pulls him back, where's the damage? It's Aja right now. The Keeper's verdict is that Knight is guilty. His hubris has been his downfall as Junja puts him six feet under. There's no way BLG had the correct timer on Aja's teleport, I feel like. You know, they, they kind of walk, it, it walk. work. That, that is not a mistake that you kind of give lightly here. 
and even the silver lining of getting bot tower was just answered by top for PSG. Now, BLG will get this tower, but you can already look at bot side and see that PSG are going to trade as well. So what had been a good start for BLG is really starting to disappear as Aja now solo under the tower. This could be a bit of risky play. He has the Keeper's Verdict in a few seconds, still has his Flash. Betty trying to come across as well. He's met with Knight. The Accelerated Shot Blast doing a lot of work on. Looking for that turret. TP coming in from PSG as they look to collapse. On not tanking the tower yet. Has that Concussive Blow. Steadfast Presence coming out. There's the Quickness. It's only onto the tank so far, but onto the first target. Glacial Prison coming down as well with Slow Maple for a second, but Junja's here to join the Barney to join the fight. PSG find another bin. is being pinged to hit that mid lane tower, but there's still a couple of seconds before he can get on it. Betty's going to try and answer him. He has the demolish and five grubs it will be enough to take the turret but it's the exact same thing again blg not respecting how quickly psg can get across the map they reset on but archer elk. goes for elk gets the cleanse out of him in exchange for his flash a ginger and woody though can look for this and elk back in in a precarious situation ginger just go for the Kaiser Killer Instinct out. TP behind by Bin as well. The Impale hits on to Elk. Bin looking to do what he did in game one, but the verdict is that he can't get in there. I don't think BLG are going to fight this, though. They're just looking for that tier two and top, trying to accelerate this chase even further. PSG, not really sure how they want to approach this. Aja has his teleport up, but he's still got to run there. Terra goes down, and now if this Poppy shows on the wave, Jace TP's in. There's the TP in. Azure can TP as well. We'll answer with one of his own BLG. Grouped up as four for now. Bin's going to join them. Junja trying to get in towards the pit to take the Drake. Unlocked up. The Blade Caller coming back as well. And Junja will land the smite. But Woody goes down first. Shun and Bin, the next two targets. It's support for support so far. Azure still looking for a little bit more. Knight trying to put the damage down from long range. That's what we talked about with this composition. Their ability to poke. But in this fight, they haven't really had the opportunity to do so. Junja can look for a little bit more. Chucks a rock across the wall and hits. Knight in his back. PSG trying to open up towards this mid lane tier one. Elk and Knight here to defend. There's another wave on its way, though. Yeah, I mean, Jace can try and poke, but you've got two fat tanks in front of you. Can't really get the damage around oh. them. Forces the flash with just the raw Two Scarner. as well for Maple with the Mana Moon in the Spear of Sojin. Two as well for Knight, or two and a half with the last Whisper in his inventory. Maple still sacking up a little bit slow as the hook goes down onto Ginger. There's the double impale into the grand entrance with the charm coming back with the quickness into the blade caller. Look at the CC. Look at the suppression on BLG. And look at the flash forward from Betty. He tries to get onto Elk. He can't quite get the damage down. Elk somehow survives through the burn, through everything. Elk yeah, he is... has so many feathers down. He yeah. wanted the, the biggest of blade callers. Just needed a tiny bit more. You behind. Elk not here. Knight the first target, Azure locks him up for a second, on going forward as well, Azure still trying to chase Knight out, Bin here to join the party as on flashes away, Keeper's verdict on Bin is that he needs to come back in a couple of moments, he's going to TP behind them here, but perhaps PSG have a moment in the 4v5 to really open up, Mon comes down, the Featherstorm used as well, but Bin finds the four-man stun on the back line, L cleanses away the Blade Caller route, and once again it's Giga Bin, absolutely styling on fools. PSG completely fall to the non-weapon. is to be ahead of the curve in terms of items, in terms of damage, and that's exactly where BLG are now. 6,000 gold, their lead. They have three items doing exactly that onto Woody and Junja and just constantly putting damage into the backs of PSG. And every comp with a Bin Jax is just a Bin Jax comp as well. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have a Sejuani, but he, he's too over 2,000 gold uh, ahead now as well, working on the Frozen Heart so he can be a tank in the middle. On looking for the hook here, onto Azure, goes in with the depth charge as well. He's impaled, the quickness on the back line, but already BLG have taken one kill. It's one for one so far, on and Azure falling, Betty having to pop the Featherstorm. Yeah, bin, 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 bin. It's Bin, baby! <laughs> already we see Elk killing off Betty. Bin looking for a little bit more as Woody dashes out of the fight. Bin wasn't even really needed, just forces PSG away. Now the tier two in the bot lane, the target for BLG. It's a nice attempt from PSG, but Bin on the flank sets up for BLG to take the fight. Now he's back on towards mid, and he's healthy as you like. Maple has hit that execution threshold, and looks like PSG are trying to collapse onto Bin. No flash for him, no way out. You gotta feel. Goes back in with the counter strike. No way. Who needs a way out? This is Bin we're talking about, and then he he's dashes away with a leap strike. Put him in the trash, Bin. Does exactly what you need him to perform from time to time, even the series against FlyQuest as well. 
It was a very close game in the early game until FlyQuest really began to take it away. They're still looking for more here, though, as Ginger goes in with the Impale. The Quickness coming out as well. It's stopped by the Death Charge, but Knight is locked against the wall, and Bin, even he can't rectify this situation, can't bail them out. The Bay Caller back onto On, who has to flash away himself. Elk now joining the battle, a double counter strike as the Engage goes on to Azure, but BLG have only found one so far. Betty's on that front line, no feather storm for him, and Bin finds it again. I doubted him for a second, but he makes you believe that Jax is the most OP pick in the game. It's Bin again to clean it up for BLG. Bin decimates PSG Talon, and with that, they will be bearing out of the world's championship. But for BLG, it's only one more step on what is a long road ahead of them. BLG are looking to get to two and two to challenge for the quarterfinals to continue to level up as they defeat PSG and go. These were the best highlights from today's World's 2024 matchup. Click that subscribe button faster than Ramus can say, okay. See you on the next one.